the um, national media and many Cowboy fans, they're sleeping on the Philadelphia Eagles defense. Boy, oh boy, has the narrative been about Dallas's defense versus Philly's offense. And it's a heck of a narrative. I agree. I agree. You're forgetting that we got another side of the football that's been playing excellent. Okay? Keep thinking that you're going to get the results that you saw in Detroit. Forget that we shut Detroit out for five straight possessions before we took our foot off the gas pedal. That's cool. We give up 17 to, to Arizona. So you think we can't play on that side of the football. Cool. See you Sunday night. Let's jump into this topic, everybody. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. Hey, if you're new to the channel, it's the first, second, third time you caught my content and you enjoyed today's discussion. We're on a journey. We're on a path. We just crossed over 6,500 subscribers. We're heading towards 7,500. I would love for you to join the Cerebral Football community. Just need you to hit that subscribe button to do that. To my OG subscribers, hat in hand here. You already know what I'm going to ask you to do, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. Smash the like button. Help me spike the algorithm and get this in front of new people that we could potentially convert into our little audience here on the YouTube. Today's topic. I'll just start off by saying, look, much respect to the Dallas Cowboys pass rush. I'll, I'll tell you straight from the jump. It is by far probably the best pass rush that we might play all season, right? Unless we reach the Super Bowl and play Buffalo, who I also think has the innate ability to get pressure on. There are different ways of gaining pressure. And I do want to talk about the fact that Dallas gains pressure by sending a lot of four-man fronts at you and dropping more guys into coverage, which makes your defense particularly difficult to beat. Same thing that we saw week one, Buffalo playing the Rams, how impactful a guy like Von Miller is and how he can disrupt you. You know, Micah Parsons for Dallas can do the same thing. But people are forgetting a very important fact. Oh yeah, all that's true about Dallas, man. It's also true about Philly. We also have a defense that gets pressure. We also have a defense that doesn't necessarily need to overcommit to the blitz to gain pressure on you. We can play. We got guys in the secondary that can make plays on the football. It's like people have forgotten that there's two sides here. There's technically three phases of the game, and I'm I'm more so concerned about that third phase, which is special teams, than I am about offense and defense. I think the only place I think that Dallas has a clear advantage over Philly in this game is special teams. But with that said, let's jump into some of the advanced analytics and why I think this Philadelphia Eagles defense is being underrated in terms of the, the coverage around this game. First thing I'll state here is, is that you can bring up anything you want. I've had people on Twitter try to get at me and talk about EPA per play and efficiency and how good, you know, you guys have played two teams that are ranked in the top 16 in efficiency and Dallas has played one team ranked in the top 16 in efficiency. Boo freaking who? Efficiency? That's what you're going to hang your hat on. Efficiency. I think I'll stick to points. What is the objective of football, ladies and gentlemen? To score points or prevent the scoring of points? Everything else is supplemental information, okay? So if you ain't ranked in the top 16 at preventing points or the top 16 of putting up points, that means you are a bottom half of the league, offense or defense. I don't care what efficiency ratings say. You're missing the forest for the trees. All right, y'all, let's jump into this. Number one, points against. Dallas, they've got a good defense, guys. They're number three overall in points against, 72 points allowed on the season. But what people forget is, is that these Philadelphia Eagles, they're seventh. They've allowed 88 points on the season. This is a top 10 defense. This is a very good defense. We're going to keep filtering this, though, because it gets better. Over the last four games, what separates Dallas from Philly in terms of points allowed? Nothing. They both allowed 53 points over the last four games. So Dallas gave up 17 points to Cincinnati, 16 to the Giants, 10 to the Washington Commanders, and 10 to the Los Angeles Rams. The Eagles, last four weeks, we've given up 7 points to the Vikings, 8 points to the Washington Commanders, 21 points to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and 17 points to the Arizona Cardinals. And before I start getting people trying to make up narratives here to say like, oh, well, we had, you know, short fields and, you know, the ball got turned over here, so that didn't really go against our defense. Boo freaking who again. It's football. By the way, the Eagles had a pick six too. It happened in the rain with windy conditions on an errant throw. It happens. Doesn't matter. I'm not filtering that out. It is what it is. You have allowed 53 points. 
the Eagles have allowed 53 points over the last four weeks. And look, we can keep filtering it further. We can go down to the last three weeks. And yes, you've allowed 12 points per game, which ranks as the number two overall defense in terms of points allowed. And the Eagles have allowed 15.3 points per game, which ranks as the number four overall defense in terms of points allowed. So over the last three weeks, and over the last four weeks, there ain't a whole lot separating these two clubs defensively. You send the Blitz 25.3% of the time. We send the Blitz 25% of the time. You guys are balling in terms of pressure. 33.6%. Number one overall in terms of getting pressure on that quarterback. But you know who's number five? Philadelphia Eagles. 27.8% of the time. We can make quarterbacks uncomfortable too. You ask me why I'm so confident in this offense? Because in that EPA per play thing you brought up, and you want to talk about how you faced one top 16 offense? Congratulations, gold star to you. Because you're about to play a top five EPA per play offense in the number five Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know if that slipped your mind or you just didn't see that when you were looking. But here comes a much better offense than you have played. Matched up with a defense that also is opportunistic. It's number one in turnover differential. It's tied for number one in total turnovers. I'm pretty dang confident in this team on Sunday night at home. You're dang right I'm confident. You want to know why? Because Cooper Rush isn't breaking the pocket on us. Cooper Rush isn't going to be able to break us down like that. Am I concerned in the back of my mind our defensive coordinator might give Cooper Rush some kind of weird respect and back off coverage on him? Sure, we've seen it before with this team. It can happen. You know, crap happens. With that said, do I think it's going to happen? No, I don't. I don't think he's going to go out there and give Cooper Rush a lot of respect. I think he's going to challenge the receivers at the line of scrimmage. I think he's going to try to give our pass rush time to really bother Cooper Rush. And credit to Cooper, he hasn't turned the ball over yet. He's been throwing and, and threading the needle in some tight windows. A lot of people don't realize that Cooper Rush ranks in the top five in terms of, you know, tight window throws. With that said, that also means there's opportunities because that also means he's throwing footballs in proximity to a one-yard separation between defender. You make a mistake with that ball placement because you're used to trying to thread the needle and you just missed by a centimeter. We got dudes that can take the football away. And that's the bottom line. All right, y'all. These are my opinions. I want to know what do you think in the comments section. I think this Philadelphia Eagles defense is being slept on. This is the number one points differential defense in terms of turnover differential. It is the number seven defense in terms of total points allowed. It is the number three defense if you want to talk about scores per possession, right? It goes, simply put, it goes San Francisco, Buffalo, Philly. Dallas ranks sixth in that statistic in terms of actual points scored per possession. It's just that where Dallas has, you know, has succeeded thus far on the season is they only given up one touchdown, but mostly field goals. You got a different offense walking through the door. I feel pretty confident we're going to put six up on you. We're going to score touchdowns on you. That number is going to change for you. So we'll see. I guess we'll see. Something's got to give here, guys. Something's got to break. I think it's going to break in our favor, but we'll tell. Time will tell. We'll know soon enough, right? All right, y'all. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see y'all in the next video.